Do you remember what you said to me after you read it? No. You very, very nicely read it, and you called me, and you said, this script is awesome, it will never in a million years get made. <laughs> Hi. Today I'm talking to producer David Lawson. He's not only my former boss, but he's also had a hand in a lot of cult favorite horror and sci-fi movies from the last 10 years, like She Dies Tomorrow, After Midnight, Spring, The Endless, and the recently released Synchronic. Those last three, by the way, were written and directed by Aaron Moorhead and Justin Benson, who are the other two-thirds to Dave's company, so you might hear their names pop up once or twice. Dave talks about how scripts get to his desk, how he feels about passing on a modern horror classic, and he's even a little overgenerous when it comes to something that I wrote, maybe to make up for the whole never-in-a-million-years thing. Hi, Dave. Thank you for sitting down and talking with me. Of course. How have you been? You know, I got no complaints. It's, uh, you know, it's a weird time here in the pandemic, uh, especially in our business. But um, honestly, it's, uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's been fun to learn how to exist outside of uh, ways that you've, you've been accustomed to. Yeah. And uh, speaking of our business, I guess that leads to uh, who exactly are you? What do you do? Oh, yeah, yeah. So I own a company uh, with a couple partners called Rustic Films. Um, we make movies. So I'm a producer uh, yeah, of, of feature films. It still sounds weird every time I say that. I, it, it feels like I'm trying to convince somebody of it <laughs> rather than it just being a fact statement. So what exactly uh, led you to this point? How did you start and how did you end up talking here with me? Um, oh my God, that's a, that's a, that's a long question. Um, Just run through your entire history real quick, if you don't mind. <laughs> so, so I, this goes all the way back to the early 2000s. I was in the military. Um, a good buddy of mine named Mike Dunker, uh, him and I became best friends, uh, decided we wanted to go to Michigan State together. So we started going to Michigan State together while he was there. He was like, Hey, I think I want to be a writer and director. Um, and then he was like, I need a producer. And I then looked up what a producer does on films because it's something I've always, uh, I love movies. I've loved movies since I was a child. I've, I've, I've watched movies. I like, I, my blockbuster card had to be replaced three times because it had been like scanned so many times and was so like damaged. And so it was one of those things, like it's a pipe dream that you never thought could ever happen. Um, uh, but then when I looked it up, I realized that the, the, the skill set needed to being a producer is a lot of the things that I do naturally. Uh, so I moved out to L.A. I was a PA for a long time and then just like kind of constantly moved up. And, and now I produce films. Nice. And that was very, uh, very eloquently put, very succinct. <laughs> um, so your company now, Rustic Films, uh, how would you exactly like categorize it? Is it like indie, mid-budget? Do you do blockbusters? What exactly is it that you guys do? Uh, kind of our, our company ethos is that we make the movies that nobody else will. Um, by, by, by definition, our, whenever I try to explain what our, our company does to either, you know, prospective directors or writers, it's always one of those things that like, I remember going into Blockbuster when I was a kid and being like, oh, that's a horror movie or that's a thriller or that's a crime drama or that's a comedy. And it's like, what we like to do at Rustic is, is kind of our films always exist in several of those categories. I would agree with that. Because what, what I feel like that humanity at its core does not exist in any one box. And whenever you get a chance to kind of expand your, you know, become a little bit more three dimensional, uh, that's when, that's when characters become a little bit more real. Uh, and that's, right. what, that's what we try to do at Rustic. Would it be fair to describe you as the producer as the man with the money? Sometimes. Uh, sometimes I'm the man with the money. Sometimes I'm the man searching for the money. Um, that's always the Achilles heel of, of producing in general or or making movies in general is because like that's that's the cornerstone of like before any of us get to do anything, we have there there has to be some kind of capital involved. Mm -hmm. So the man with the money, yes, sometimes. And also, but like most of the time I'm looking for that money. A lot of the times I'll find a project that I like and, and my job is then to look for the money for that project. And what exactly are the kind of projects that you like? I know that you said that your movies kind of exist in several different areas at the same time. And I can attest that they're all very like kind of unique, a little bit on the fringe of, I guess, certain genres. But what exactly is it that appeals to you? I mean, oh, that's a that's that is the million dollar question. I think that the the biggest 
the biggest thing for me is characters that I can relate to, um, characters that are three dimensional. We we talk as a company constantly. It's like if you if you care about a character, everything you do to that character becomes infinitely more uh, effective. So if you care about you know, let's say you have five characters and four of them you really care about every single thing you do to those four characters matters more. So that's, that's, that's how kind of our ethos is, is, uh, mm -hmm. is to care about every character so that when you put them in situations where they are up against their life or uh, something funny happens or something dramatic happens, all of that is more effective because you actually care about them. And you, act, you, you, you can either see yourself in those characters or, or you can see somebody you know in those characters. So I know that having had worked for you for a little bit, I was the person that would sometimes read scripts before passing them off to you. I did some of the script coverage for you guys. Yep. But when I'm not around, I know that you look at a lot of the scripts that come across your desk. So when you do look at these scripts, is it like character that is the most important to you when you're reading these scripts? Or what are some of the like red flags that you tend to come across that might tell you, Oh, this isn't for us, or this just isn't good. I mean, that's where that's where I start. For for me, it's like if you don't have a character that is three dimensional, it's really it's really hard for me to get emotionally invested in a script. My goal as a producer, technically, is to say no always. A writer's job is to give me a reason to not say no. Uh, and and that and that where and where in like like. All of that is kind of like the minutia of like how a movie gets made. It's like you've given me like I've read a script now where I can't say no and I have to make this movie. It's like that's a, that's a writer's job is to give me as a producer like that like primal urge where it's like I have to make this movie. What do you think are some of the most common mistakes or just the most common things that you see in these scripts that like maybe a new writer has put on your desk? that maybe you've seen this in a bunch of other scripts and you said, oh, this is something that I can like point to that just doesn't work or at least just doesn't work for me or just like kind of gets on your nerves about them. That's tough because I mean, that's a broad, like a broad spectrum of what I've, I've come across on my desk. Mm -hmm. for, for me, being disingenuous is always something that I can like scope out immediately. So if a, if a writer or, you know, writer director is, is, is not being true to themselves, I can, I can sense that. And that to me is a turnoff just, but that, again, that's me personally, there are mm -hmm. plenty of producers in Hollywood that are fine with that. Now, I know that you guys are Rustic Films, you like to work with writer directors. Is this typical for other companies that are kind of like in your, like, I guess, range, or is this just something that you know that you guys like to do? It's not really a company policy, but really what it is, is it's the people that kind of seek us out and the people we seek out are the people that do the things that we do. Uh, Justin and Aaron are writer directors. And so like our company has, our, our company ethos has been built on writer directors. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, there is a whole world outside where people write and then separate people direct. And that, and that, that exists wonderfully um, in indie cinema. I, I find that it sometimes it's just easier to get that kind of like package deal of somebody wrote this and oh, they also have a vision and the ability to make it. Sometimes there's just you're, you're not going to find somebody that's as passionate about something, a, a, a smaller budget film that you've kind of created. Um, mm -hmm. It's harder to get a director involved in that at that point. OK, well, let's uh, let's take a step back back, I guess I want to go to like the beginning of the process. So let's say I wrote a script, which I did and you read, but we'll get to that. Maybe a couple things about that in a little bit. But let's just say I wrote a script. I don't know you. Yeah. How do I get it from my computer to your desk? I mean, that's an easy question. Uh, I, I, I put stupidly, I put my email on IMDb Pro. So anybody <laughs> can send stuff. I get stuff all the time. I'm very like selective on what I what what I allow to kind of come across my desk. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's like if it's something really good, I, I can't say no to. I don't say no to it. That's very true. Um, why why do you do that? Because I know that it's pretty typical of most companies to not accept unsolicited material at all. And yet you put your email on 
the easiest way to search possible. Why is that? Do you just like reading as much as possible? No, I, I, I that's not true at all. Um, I hate reading, but I do it because it's my job. I, I do it. I think, I think at its core, I, I never personally had the access in that I hope to create for someone. If that makes sense. Like, right. No, I get that. If there's a way that somebody can use me as a, as a conduit to launch their career, that to me would, that, that is the greatest, uh, achievement. Kind of like a college student interviewing you for a senior project. I, I mean, all, all of that. No, it's like, that's the thing. It's like, I think you just literally just randomly emailed Aaron Moorhead and he sent your email to me. And that's how you became an intern here. Uh, Justin, Aaron and I, none of us had contacts in this industry when we wanted to do this. So for us, we want to, if, if we can be that contact into the industry and like point somebody in the right direction, especially when it comes to like expanding out the, the range of voices that are heard in this industry. Like that is, that's the, that's the number one thing we can do is like, how can we, how can we help facilitate other people who don't know the way to like have a way I throw away a lot of emails that get sent to me. However, and, and this is indicative of literally this week, somebody emailed me a trailer to their film. I watched the trailer and I was like, I want to see that movie. I watched the movie and I was like, okay, you and I need to talk. And we're talking on Friday. Because like that to me is like, if you don't know how to get into this industry, it's tough. And we, we like broke the system in a weird way. And like, you know, mm -hmm. we were like, hey, we're just going to do it. And so if I can help people through that door that we've kind of created, that to me is is the greatest success of this company. Okay. Real quick, what was the name of that movie trailer? Because I came across something recently too, and for some reason I feel like it might be the same thing. Minor premise? Oh, no. Okay, I saw something for a thing called Norman that was like oh, very yeah, low yeah. budget, but like yeah, hard sci-fi. Yeah. Norman was okay. By the way, if you uh, if you get a chance to watch Minor Premise, I'll send you a link if you don't. It's fucking oh, cool. cool. It is it is so far up like what we do. Like the director was like, "Hey, I think this is kind of like what you guys do." And I watched the trailer and I was like, "Normally, I go say go fuck yourself because nobody can do what we do, but like it actually is very much what we do." Has yeah. there ever been a uh, a script that came across your desk and you passed on it, but looking back, you like regret doing that? You wish you had jumped on it. Uh, this was before we did before Rustic ever existed. Um, Hereditary came across my desk. Oh my god! <laughs> and um, and I passed on Hereditary, but uh -huh. I passed on Hereditary because the company I was with at the time could not have done the movie that Ari Oster did. Just because and of like financial limitations? Financial, yeah, like like just it, we weren't set up to do that type of film. But it, it, it's one that I always look back on. And I was like, oh, yeah, I remember reading Hereditary and being like, oh, if you have enough money, this movie is fucking bananas. And the company that I worked with at the time, just it, it, it wasn't how we were set up. Mm -hmm. um, but it will always be one of those ones that I look back on. And I'm like, yep. <laughs> that that came across my desk and I said no. Is there any part of that movie that you think, oh, we could have done that like any sort of better, or are you just happy with how Hereditary came out? I don't know that we could have done it better. Or at least uh, different. I don't know that we could even have done it different. I, I, I think that we could have given Ari the support that he needs to to make that film now, but I don't know that I was there when that movie came when that script came across my desk. Okay. And I think that that's a lot of things that like people don't understand is sometimes like saying no is the right answer. Mm -hmm. Okay. I guess, do you want to talk a little bit about uh, this, my script that I wrote yeah. or, okay, cool. Cause I want, do you remember what you said to me after you read it? No. Okay, because that's where the whole idea for this senior project podcast came from. You very, very nicely read it, and you called me, and you said, this script is awesome, it will never in a million years get made. <laughs> so, <laughs> And I want to know why. Okay, so, yes, <laughs> I, I, by the way, I do remember, re I do remember writing that, and um, I hope you know, by the way, I hope you know that comes from my heart. 
Oh, I do. I know. Don't worry. You're, Ryan, you're not the first person who has gotten that email. You won't be the last person that's gotten that email. Mm -hmm. One of the one of the pure joys in my life. Um it, it it's it's really it's really hard for people to understand. But like one of the absolute pure joys of my life is that I get to read scripts that will never be made into movies. <laughs> I've seen the movie that you wrote in my head because that's how I read scripts. That's how I read books. That's how I read everything. It's it's I'm a visual reader. Mm -hmm. um, if I don't like create this world, I can't actually function as a reader. Uh, why it will never get made. It, it, I always tell people it only takes one person to say yes for all of the no's that you ever get. Mm -hmm. It only takes one person to say yes. That being said, a, a period piece movie about Shakespeare is going to is is tough at its core. And it's going to be even tougher for somebody trying to break into the business. And I guess that's kind of why I wanted to have this whole conversation is because I want to really figure out what it is that keeps a passion project from ever like actually entering reality. So what would your advice be for a new writer trying to break in? Would it be uh, write small, write intimate, write something that you could make on a shoestring budget? My recommendation always is for people to do that. That's the way that I got into this business. And that's how I've, I've stayed active in this business. That being said, it's like, yeah, there, there, there's other ways into it. Um, I just, I don't personally know them and it's not how I've succeeded. What do you think would be the most challenging part of my script to actually get made? Would it be the period piece financial angle of just yes. the cost of it? Yep. I mean, yeah, yeah literally anytime you, you start like playing with a period piece, it's just, it becomes exponentially more expensive uh, because you have costumes and locations that just don't exist today that you then have to create that you don't have when you're doing a contemporary movie. You can't just go to a location. You have to like make sure that location is period accurate. The ending of it is a little weird too. It's a little abstract. Do you find that? Well, first of all, I guess, do you agree? I, I, I would, I would say yes. The ending is abstract. However, that's not what kills it. What kills it is the money that makes it to the point of the abstract. Right. Okay. You know what I mean? Like it's it's right. No, I understand. It, it's like one of those things where you're like, you can do you can do abstract stuff. Like I mean, Rustic has made a a history on doing abstract stuff. Yes. But because we do it for so cheaply, it makes sense. And when dealing with horror or sci-fi. Getting a little abstract, do you find that harder to actually find the money to put into the project? It, it is it is it is always harder to find money when you can't put something in a very clear box. That being said, that is like our company has been built on on movies that you can't put in a clear box. Right. Your company exists outside of the box. We we live in several boxes. The idea where we're like, oh, hey, yeah, no, this all makes sense in, in this like clear like box. It's like, that's not what we do. It'll never be what we do. And it isn't what interests us as a company. What is the last movie that you watched? Minor Premise. All right, that's fair. Did you just watch that? Uh... <laughs> I watched it this morning. So do you think that that is a solid tactic? Just like cold calls, cold emails, something you would suggest if they're capable of doing so, if the information is out there. That's a that's. A... I realize you don't speak for every producer. Yeah, that, I mean that's like a tough call because I know that I do it personally because because again it's like we never had that avenue in being as accessible as we can be is it, people's avenue in. It's the way people reach out to us and and. Honestly, like it makes us feel good to be able to help those people. OK, I guess. Do you want to just talk a little bit about how the current state of the world has affected the ability to get films made from a producer's point of view? So obviously, COVID has thrown a, a, a monkey wrench into so many aspects of every person's life. But from like a, a filmmaker's point of view, it's very tough because 
when you are asking somebody to come on set, you are asking them to to give themselves to the project. And in a COVID environment, what what that kind of like extrapolates to is like you're asking them to put themselves and all of their family at risk for the project that you think is important. Obviously, at, at Rustic Films, we've done we, we we made a movie in the in the COVID world. However, we did it in a way where everybody was completely isolated. When when you go beyond that, it becomes a little bit for me personally. It's like it's tough to ask somebody to to especially you know. Uh, I mean, obviously, Ryan, you know, as a new father, it's like it's really tough for me to ask somebody to put themselves and their family at risk, right, for something that that is technically as trivial as as entertainment. There are companies that are still doing it, and and they are doing it very safely. However, they have the money to do it safely. Mm-hmm. Indie film, it's a lot tougher to do it in a way that is uh, safe for all of us. So it's a little bit shut down now, unless you can do it at, a, at a, such like a small, minute world where you can kind of like control everything. So I guess COVID wouldn't make it any easier to get a uh, large scale horror period piece made. COVID will literally be the antithesis of something that would make it easier. <laughs> I mean, it, I mean, like all of the things that 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 make that script interesting and fun. By the way, the script is really good. Uh, I read the script in one sitting, which you know me. That's oh well, thank you. That's not something I do. All of the all of the things that make that movie interesting are the reasons why it can never be done in COVID. Can I ask what is the worst part about that script? Honestly, because I really I want to talk to people and anyone that I will talk a little bit about this script with i want to find out what doesn't really work the the, the hardest part about that script is the period piece of it all Mm -hmm. uh i mean that's that's it that that, that's you know when you want to talk about like what makes this movie hard to make it's that that being said like you know there's ways around that but like like that's what makes that movie hard to make is because of the expenses you're going to do on a period piece Okay, well, thank you for uh, having such uh, nice words about it. Hopefully, somebody else will have um, will not be as nice as you. <laughs> Although I really appreciate it. Thank you for talking with me. I think we covered a lot of ground here. Is there anything else that you want to mention or anything else that you want to tell to any aspiring young writer, filmmaker, director that we haven't already covered? I mean, the biggest thing is always that I always tell people is like, look, your, your, your job is to give me a reason to say no. As, as a producer, your job is to literally find as many reasons to say yes as possible. And if you can do that, you'll be successful in this business. Is there anything you want to shout out, plug, maybe a new um, movie that you can now rent? Go see Synchronic. It's out on VOD. Maybe it'll be in the SVOD at this point. But uh, yeah. Go to rustic.film because Ryan uh, Fitzgerald made that website. And it's a pretty it's a pretty nice website. It's a say great so website. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, thank you so much again, Dave. I hope we can talk again real soon. Sounds good, bud. You can find Dave at David Lawson JR on Instagram and Twitter. And since the recording of our conversation, Synchronic debuted at number one on Netflix. So congrats to Dave and the others at Rustic and you can find Synchronic there anytime. Check out the other episode up now, where I talk to Dr. Rebecca McHendry, an amazing filmmaker and professor who literally has a PhD in horror. And come back next week when I talk to writer and director Amy Simons, creator of She Dies Tomorrow, The Girlfriend Experience, and so much more. You don't want to miss that. You can find my script that Dave and I were discussing, along with some more of my work at ryanfitzgerald.org, and you can find more of the show at Hollywood Greenhorn on Instagram and at Greenhorn Pod on Twitter. 